Good evening. Welcome to an evening with women. Thank you for supporting the Los Angeles LGBT Center's services for women and girls. Honestly, we need you now more than ever. When we gathered here last May, I began my remarks with a joke about Donald Trump. At the time, it was scarcely imaginable to most of us that he could actually become president. Now we are four months into the Trump administration. How's that going for you? They have put in place a slate of anti-LGBT, misogynistic, xenophobic appointees of unprecedented proportion who have made speedy progress in undermining the rights of countless Americans. Already, they have dismantled so much that is important to the LGBT community and to women and girls. They have revoked Obama-era guidance protecting LGBT school kids from discrimination, withdrawn litigation against North Carolina's notorious anti-LGBT law, which, contrary to misleading statements, has simply been replaced by another discriminatory law, passed legislation aimed at defunding Planned Parenthood, appointed someone to oversee federal family planning dollars who thinks that contraception does not work, quietly rescinded safeguards for LGBT employees of federal contractors, removed questions related to LGBT people from the National Survey of Older Americans and the 2020 Census, signed a so-called Religious Liberty Bill, an order paving the way for anti-LGBT, anti-woman discrimination by anyone claiming a religious or moral belief as justification. And neither the President nor the Secretary of State has said a word about the Chechen government's concentration-like camp, incarceration, torture, and murder of hundreds of gay men. And this is just the beginning. As of tonight, we must continue to live with this narcissistic, lying administration for approximately 1,347 days, 12 hours, 14 minutes and 37 seconds, but who's counting? If they have their way with all of the policies that they hope to enact, what will our country look like in four years? How many people are going to languish and die without access to health care? How many teenagers are going to get pregnant without access to birth control? How many children will have their lives shattered because one of their parents has been deported? How many LGBT kids are going to suffer discrimination and violence in the schools? How many LGBT adults are going to be denied vital services or even their jobs because of purported moral or religious objections? I know we're all worried about all of these things and many others. That's why there is so much talk about resistance and fighting back. Working to ensure that the administration in 2021 is not one that is hell-bent on hurting us. And I agree, we must fight back. We must resist, no matter how hard it may be. But tonight, I am here to remind all of us of a critically important fact. We cannot and must not operate solely from a frame of resistance. That is not how the women's movement created a revolution. It is not how LGBT people rose from the shadows to a place of pride. 
focusing on resistance alone. We, that is not how we have literally changed the world. No matter the obstacles we faced, no matter who was in power, we have never accepted the status quo or settled for crumbs. And we certainly have not been satisfied with simply trying to limit the damage that is being done to us. I've been an activist for 37 years. Ever since I led a petition drive in junior high school so girls could wear pants. If I've learned anything over the years, it's that we should never sell ourselves short. Simply hunkering down for the next four years is not an option. We cannot allow timidity or fear or even the prospect of short-term failure to reduce our expectations or our demands. That kind of determination has been key to our movement's success thus far, and it is key to our future. We have always fought for more than what many insiders and many outsiders advised. Often we fought for more than what most even dreamed was possible. That has been our movement's hallmark in the face of seemingly insurmountable odds. We have always expected more. We have demanded more. More freedom, more equality, more justice for women and girls, for LGBT people, and for all oppressed people. We have always set our sights high and persevered, even in the most difficult times imaginable. In the darkest days of the AIDS epidemic, with death and devastation all around us, and the horrible backlash that followed against all LGBT people, we never let up. And in so doing, we inspired others all over the world. In fact, tonight, we are joined by leaders of the burgeoning LGBT movement in China, and a few from Nepal, who are building their movement in the most undemocratic of environments. And they aren't letting up either. And because we never reduced our expectations or lost sight of our ultimate goals, we have won enormous victories. Victories that many believed could never be achieved. We changed health care. We enacted non-discrimination laws in cities and states across the nation. We won the right to raise our own children and to serve openly in the military. And we secured the freedom to marry. Fighting for justice and winning is what we know how to do. It's one of the things we do best. In these difficult times, it's critical to remind ourselves of that fact. We must remember not only that we are on the right side of history, but that we are fierce and resilient and inspiring. We must use that power to ensure that we do more than simply weather the storm. We must be the storm. Los Angeles and California have enormous power. We will be to Trump what Texas was to Obama. We will set the example for our nation, continuing to make real progress while holding fast to the values we cherish. Inclusivity, diversity, acceptance. We will organize our community and our allies elsewhere in red and purple states 
so that voices like ours will be heard in town halls, in school board meetings, polling places, and everywhere that our rights and health are at stake. We will speak up and expose the wrongs and hold the perpetrators accountable. And in 2018 and 2020, with regard to those who would have us regress to an America that was never great for people like us, we will send them packing. And while the extremists in Washington attempt to dismantle health care, destroy Planned Parenthood, attack immigrants, pollute the environment, take away women's rights over our own bodies, promote discrimination against us and more, your center will definitely be resisting and fighting back. But with your help, we'll be doing so much more. While they are building a wall, we will be building this. The Anita May Rosenstein campus on Santa Monica Boulevard, more than a city block wide. We'll dramatically expand our services and housing for the two groups who need it the most, LGBT youth and seniors. It will be an iconic landmark that will serve as a beacon of hope and inspiration for people around the globe. reflecting the real values that define us as a people and as a nation. Truth, compassion, optimism, community, liberty and justice for all. Our campus will be a proud and living proof that no matter who is in control, we cannot and will not be stopped, not now, not ever. That's the kind of leadership you should expect from our movement. And I promise you, that is the kind of leadership that your center will provide.